All right. What is up, everyone? I hope you're having a beautiful day. All right. What is up, everyone? I hope you're having a beautiful day. Cub Cooker here on the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast. Coming at you guys with a very special message today. Uh, if I can get all of my cameras angled right. We got uh, Facebook was crooked over there. Sorry, Facebook. Um, well, episode 122, my favorite number is 22. We've got a cold moon tonight. Uh, it's actually today. Cold moon is, uh, up in the, up in the air now. Um, and I wanted to talk about what does this mean? What is a cold moon? Why is it important? Uh, especially within the spirituality community. Now, everything I'm going to share right now is not necessarily, um, what other spiritual TikTokers or YouTubers or Facebookers or whatever you want to call me are going to share. Uh, this is really my interpretation, uh, my wild idea. And I think I'm going to get a new microphone where it's not it because it, I disappear when I put it in front of my face and it doesn't really pick up if it's not like right here. So I'm looking at just tying these two things together with a new microphone, like maybe a shotgun microphone that would live right here. Um, just for you guys that listen, so you know that I am working on the audio here. But I want to read this from 1 Corinthians 12. By the way, this is a Cub Cooker Supernatural podcast. We discuss faith, spirituality, and the paranormal every day on this show. Um, I am not an inherently Christian channel because, um, I am open to everyone here. We have everyone from agnostic, atheist, Muslim, Jewish, Christian, uh, Hindu. We have, uh, Buddhists in our community. Um, just really, I don't care what walk of life, what faith tradition or religious, uh, background you have. I don't care who you're married to, where you do or don't go to church. I love you. I love you. I love you. And we had a rough, rough day yesterday. One of the roughest podcasts I've had. I had so many people throwing stones in the comments. Just the energy was just deep. Then I found out, oh yeah, we got this full moon. This is the last full moon of the year, guys. The last one. It's important. And if you step into it, you have an opportunity to step into your power you have an opportunity to step into your purpose. You have an opportunity to shed things that have bothered you, tortured you, plagued you, whatever you want to say your whole life. You have an ad opportunity right now today. And I'm going to explain why. Because all this ties together, by the way. It ties with the book of Enoch. It ties with um, the full moon today. The cold moon, which by the way... The Mohawk people, uh, indigenous people from the New York area. What's up, Integrity? How are you, my friend? Uh, the Mohawk people uh, called this moon the cold moon because winter was setting in. Remember that quote from, uh, from Game of Thrones. What's up, Annie? How are you doing, my friend? I hope you're having a beautiful day. Much better energy today now that I realize what we're dealing with. My bad yesterday. I didn't know what we were dealing with, guys. People, uh, this energy hit so hard. Pain is spiked right now. Um, old wounds are spiked right now, emotionally. People don't understand what's going on. You can ask any, uh, any nurse that they have a, a higher rate of uh, visits within the ERs. Uh, any psychological professional will understand that during these full moons, specifically the one today, it's happening right now, is one of the the heaviest times when people are like, you know, they're calling their, you know, I got to get in, I got to see my, my psychologist, got to see the psychiatrist, like uh, lunar ticks, luna ticks, lunar ticks, not little ticks that get on your, your skin, but the ones that get in your mind, the one that get in your ethos that mess with you. Moon child, yeah, absolutely. You got a moon child, Annie, absolutely. Um, so while yesterday was one of the roughest ones and I just, I did everything that I could to break through it and, um, uh, I didn't end up live streaming the second half of the day. I was, I was really upset by the comments, just 
the way people treated me, not just me, but the work that I'm doing, the disrespect for, for themselves, by the way, it wasn't even for the work I'm doing. It was, uh, the disrespect talking about, uh, how, what I'm doing is total, you know, hmm, hooey, which is fine. You don't have to believe it, but you can move on. And people were just there just pounding the comments just with, uh, with, with, you know, just all kinds of stuff. They just want to, even one of them admitted, you know, I, I love to live in people's head rent free, you know, and it's like, where's that coming from? What a painful place, what a painful existence that individual must have that they feel like they have to just get in people's heads rather than stepping into their power, rather than stepping into their purpose, rather than activating their spiritual gifts, they would rather mess with other people and waste their time online messing with other people. And that's what I want to talk about today. This is uh, this is an amazing opportunity we all have. By them disrespecting you, uh, you can look at it like this. They're only disrespecting themselves. Absolutely. Hate is going to hate. That's right. Go get you some haters. That's what Grant Cardone says, one of my biggest mentors. Read the 10X rule. If you haven't, if you still have time this year, get the 10X rule. It's one of the best books you'll ever read if you're trying to get something done with your life, if you're actually trying to step into your purpose, you're trying to build something, specifically when you know what that is. If you're still trying to figure out what that is, this is the perfect podcast for you because that's what we talk about every day. We talk about aliens. We talk about UFOs. We talk about quantum. We talk about mindset. We talk about spirituality. We talk about faith. We talk about biblical stuff. We talk about uh, stuff from Hindu mysticism, uh, from uh, ancient mythology. We talk about all kinds of cool stuff here. And that's what this podcast is all about. An all-inclusive podcast, guys. All-inclusive. Stay positive about your message. Absolutely. It was interesting. Yesterday, I got so worked up about the message. I was just like, it just definitely lit me on fire. So it backfired against the people because I'm going to tell you guys right now, we had 10 people, 10 people from one podcast, the one where people were attacking me the whole time. And I got fired up. It did something. It lit a fire. It backfired on them because we had 10 people join our mythos group. And I was humbled. Ten people in one day, by the way. Just, I mean, my message just ding, 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 all day. New people joining. I see your third eye, absolutely. Um, ten brand new people in the Mythos group. If you don't know what the Mythos group is, it's a support group for what I do here. It's like a, a patron group of supporters. This is uh, essentially a crowdfunded mission that I do. This is uh, something I do full-time. I show up here twice a day, every day. Um, we've got a private community around it, um, and that helps support what I'm doing, but we get to do some really cool stuff in that community, go deeper into these messages. I've got a private video library in there. Um, we also do uh, live video calls with the community members once a week on the weekends. Um, it's pretty awesome guys. Uh, and I cannot believe, I mean, I can, cause I knew this was coming. I knew we were breaking through barriers. I knew we were doing stuff with this. I know there's a huge opportunity on the way to just, just blow up what we're doing here to a whole nother level. There's partnerships and collaborations and, uh, opportunities that, that I'm going to get with this, that is just going to take it to a whole nother level. And with that, I want to make sure that I stay committed to you guys, the audience. And that's what I love about the Mythos community. It's not like, you know, they're paying me to, um, you know, sit there and, and counsel them or anything like that. This is, you know, yeah, there's a lot of cool perks that come with it. But ultimately, they're stepping out saying, I believe in your message. And I want to make sure you show up tomorrow online and get this out to more people. And that's that's what I love about it. So thank you guys that did join. If you join, check your email immediately. You're going to have an email that's going to give you a link to the Facebook group and it'll give you all the instructions you need to, to dive in uh, with this community. So be sure, be sure you check your email if you join. And if you join today, uh, anybody watching this one that loves what I'm doing, it's over at cubcooker.com, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.com. Uh, and it's only nine bucks a month, so why wouldn't you, you know, um, especially when you've been showing up here and you love what I'm doing. Because today I'm going to teach you about your spiritual gifts. We've got a lot of people out here, a lot of suffering going on, a lot of, especially around the holidays right now. 
and you need your spiritual gift in 2023. Everything is coming down the pipeline. I can't tell you what's exactly coming, but I know our world is changing. I can see it. I can feel it. I can smell it. I can taste it. It's changing. And you need to get in contact. You need a deep, intimate contact with your spiritual gifts. Everyone watching today has a spiritual gift, by the way. Uh, you're doing great, buddy. Uh, do me a favor. Read Ezekiel in the Bible. Uh, it says that the heavens were opened up. Yeah, absolutely. I will, man. Thank you very much. Um, every one of you has a spiritual gift, guys. And, and, and once you recognize it and activate it, that's when the magic happens. And I'm going to be talking this afternoon with Joshua from Sons of God Ministries. Been doing a beautiful collaboration with him. Um, the world changed in 2012. Yeah, absolutely. And another major shift happened in 2020. Another major shift. Timeline shift, guys. If you don't believe in the timeline shift stuff, um, just keep going down the rabbit hole with what I'm talking about. And you'll find yourself on a brand new timeline. You'll find yourself in a creative position uh, whether you are a creative person, like a painter, an artist, or anything, that doesn't matter. You are a creator somehow. Somehow. Some people create with uh, quantum mechanics. Some people create uh, with sciences. Some people create with paint. Some people create with math. Some people create with uh, leadership. Like you, You've got something. You've got something there. Um, Alexandra, what is up? Welcome, my friend. I hope you're doing well and having a beautiful holiday season. Temple, thank you for being here. Uh, Temple says, I agree. It took me a couple of years with that. Uh, if it weren't for the darkness, I never would have uh, sought the truth. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's unpack this. What's this moon about? Just real quick, we got a moon right now that's about to... Um, it, it's pretty wild. You can go look at it at CNN.com. Um, I just like to find it on main news sites and just get the data there, guys. Like... Everybody's afraid of all the news stuff, you know, and it's just go get your data and then look deeper into it yourself. You know, you don't have to don't blindly trust me. Don't blindly trust anybody. But um, but yeah, CNN says December's full moon, also known as a cold moon, will shine bright in the night sky this Wednesday, peaking at 1108 p.m. Um Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars will also be visible in the night sky Wednesday with an extraordinary rare phenomenon known as a lunar oculation of Mars set to happen around the moon's peak fullness according to Earth's sky. At this point, the red planet will disappear behind the moon for a short period of time. This highly unusual event will be visible in parts of the Americas, Europe, and Northern Africa. December 7th also marks, now that's important, the 7th of December, okay? The 7th of December, what's the number 7? That's the God number, okay? You guys that know anything about numerology. Uh, and if you're new to my channel, I don't specialize in any one thing. I know enough about all of these little things uh, to kind of, you know, put them all together. So um, that's kind of where I approach it from. Um, I'm not a numerology expert. I'm not an astrology expert. Um, I'm not a prophecy expert. I'm not an energy work expert. I'm, I'm giving you guys the whole salad here, okay? And and it's gonna it's gonna awaken a gift within you. We literally have psychics in here. We have people who read tarot. We have people uh, who love crystals. We have people who are prophetic. We have people who are energy workers and healers. And I want you guys to know those are all gifts from God. Okay, you're going to be told by the, your churches, your your religious institutions, you don't know where that comes from. Stay away from it. Blah, blah blah. Well, I'm going to tell you guys right now in Acts, all of these gifts that I just said are clearly laid out. Uh, actually, not in Acts. It's it's in uh, where is it? It's in Corinthians. Uh, they're talked about in Acts too, I believe. But uh, so I look to the Bible too. Like I look to I look at all this stuff, and I we try to understand that all of this is coming. Um, it's all coming from source, okay? Now, you can use those gifts for servitude of lower gods if you want to. Uh, but if you stay tapped into the divine fractal mind of God, source, creator, unity, um, L, whatever you want to call him, it, they, them, um, man, that, that's, when it, that's when life changes, when you commit those gifts to the source and realize where they're coming from. 
Um, you know, it's talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Well, you know, what is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Mother. Uh, again, we, we've twisted all of that. You know, you get, you got the divine feminine, the divine masculine, and then the logos, which is the Christ within all of us. The logos is the divine expression. And when you, when you intermingle all of those things together, you have the, the driven action of the divine masculine. You have the, the power of receiving healing and intuition with the divine mother, receive those gifts from the divine mother. And then you activate them all with the logos, which is that frequency of love, that divine expression that is the actions of God within the self to the world. That's when life changes. And I love this, guys. I'm multi-streaming light right now. And, and you can tell, I don't know what's up with TikTok. I'm sure I've been shadow banned for something. Yeah, you know, I got 16 people on TikTok. We got, uh, you know, I don't know, three or four times as many over here on Facebook. Uh, so, you know, pray for me on TikTok here. Maybe it'll get unlocked again soon. Uh, we've got almost twice as many. Yeah, we do have twice as many followers over here on Facebook now than we do on TikTok. Uh, so I don't know what the deal is with the TikTok algorithm thing, but, you know, just pray that I get un, un whatever on here. Uh, there's no like official flag on my account or anything like that, but it's pretty obvious there's something suppressing this message. When I put it out on other platforms, even YouTube now is just booming. I mean, I'm not kidding, guys. 700 new followers in 48 hours on YouTube. No, in, in a week, in a week, in seven days. Seven days, I got almost 700 new followers on YouTube. And I don't, I don't even know, like, it's crazy. I've had a YouTube channel that just sat there for years. This message is powerful. And when I watch platforms clearly suppress it, I have a problem with that. Uh, because there's people right now that want, need, and must hear this message. So you guys can share it, blow it up with likes, love, share it with people, share my videos to your accounts over on TikTok. You guys, that's one of the biggest ways you can help me. Let's get this out there. So seven, seven is very important. Today is December 7th. I'm spinning on all of this, by the way. Uh, tomorrow, I just got a notification on my uh, app for calendar app. Tomorrow is the Feast of Immaculate Conception. I did not know that. Very interesting. This ties in with the God number today. The Immaculate Conception within the Virgin Mary. What are you going to conceive tomorrow? Okay. Tomorrow is eight, the eighth, infinity. Okay. Again, I'm spinning on this. I'm not, this is not coming from any astrology website. This is not coming from anything. This is coming direct downloads. Okay. Direct downloads. What are you going to conceive tomorrow? Okay. Full moon today. What does that mean? Cold moon. Winter's coming. Things are about to solidify in your life. Yes, keep doing what you're doing. I'm a healer and love astrology. Uh, this moon Mars energy is a lot uh, of anger and anxiety. Absolutely. So how do we transmute anger and anxiety into power? Because I got it right now. Y'all can see it. You saw it yesterday, but it got 10 new people in our group supporting what I'm doing. And I, I don't have a message of anger and anxiety, by the way. I'm just saying I'm leveraging what's naturally happening in me into a higher good. And that's the problem. Everybody's trying to run from all of this stuff. Oh, run from the bad, you know, oh yeah, there's anxiety. No, step into your power with it, okay? You got everybody wants to pop a Pez pill for something uh, to try to make themselves feel better. And, and I'm, not, I'm not a health expert. I'm not here to tell you how to do anything, but I'm telling you guys, I do this on my own, okay? I take vitamins, I drink water and tea, this is all me, okay? So when I have these emotions and stuff like this that churns up, what do I do? Step into it, okay? So we've got that going on today. And yeah, that, that's something significant. Like, look up Mars. Uh, Mars God Association. Yeah, the God of War. Okay, there you go. So what is that? What does war, what is the opportunity for that war energy within self? Okay, you have the opportunity to conquer something within self within this moon before we go into the feast of the Immaculate Conception tomorrow on the eighth, the infinity number, the eight. Turn it up. 
turn up the infinity. Um, winter is coming. We've got the cold moon today. What does that mean? Something's about to solidify in your life. So are you going to wage war against it within self, not against anyone else? This is all esoteric. Everything I'm telling you is esoteric, by the way. I swear I just told my good friend the same thing. Awesome, awesome. See, synchronicity, you start looking for it, you find it. It's not cognitive bias. It's legit. It's real. You're literally in a new timeline. You start seeing those numbers on the clock. You start seeing synchronicities. Other people in your life start having the same experiences because you're connected. We're all freaking connected, guys. The biggest lie we've ever been told is that you're an individual. No, no, no. We're all part of the same organism. Yeah, you have an individual experience, but when you put yourself on an island and you're not meditating, you're not doing yoga, and you don't realize that the universe is created from you, God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. That's the message that Christ was really bringing. We try to justify all these old God things. All of the, you know, and I'm about to read a little bit today from Book of Enoch. And I'm going to tell you right now, it makes me question what God was Enoch in front of. What mythology is this really telling? You're just seeing more of the punishment, more of the, you know, it even goes into the whole you know, sword and combat thing in it. But I'm telling you, the father that Christ talked about, he's love, he is synchronicity. He is found within the frequency of love. He is found within the patterns and the serendipities and the synchronicity and all of these little things that when you step into the true divine father, you see it everywhere. You see it in the blades of grass. You see the fractal energy within everything. What's a fractal? Go look up what a fractal is if you don't know. It's an image that there's there's an image called the Mandelbroth set. You can zoom in. It's the size of the, our planet, by the way. It's a huge image, but you can go look at it online. You can zoom in as far as you want, and you'll never. It just seems infinite. You, I don't even think that a human life is long enough to explore all of this image. You can zoom in as far as you want and out as far as you want. It's created by you know, uh, an algorithm. And it's only the size of our planet, mind you, not the universe, not all of creation, or dare I say the multiverse. I'm just saying it's, it's all there guys. So what is this, what is this energy here that we have? Yeah, it's, we're moving into a winter season. Okay. And you have an opportunity right now within self to wage war against timelines in your life, against feelings, fears, anxieties, uh, things you haven't forgiven yourself for, things you haven't forgiven others for, things that you are believing on that are not serving you at all, that are not letting you step in. For some of you guys, it's as simple as believing that spiritual gifts like being a psychic is evil. I'm raising my hand because I was raised in a homeschool cult type situation not that my parents were that way but some of the members of the group uh it was everything from you can't play magic the gathering you can't play dungeons and dragons you got to smash your your zelda game that you love by the way because i had to do that in front of a bunch of people um you can't have anything there's no harry potter no disney nothing like guys i'm telling you Quit being afraid of everything and step into what God is actually calling you to, what source, what creator is actually calling you into. Quit being afraid of it, okay? Um, I know I've been afraid of my inner spiritual powers for a long time because I'm very empathic, and that automatically is going to lead me to being very intuitive, which is borderline on the psychic abilities, a lot of people have called me more prophetic than anything for being able to, you know, see all the different connections. Sure, whatever. Call me whatever you want. I've probably been called better and I've probably been called worse. So, yeah, Harry Potter taught me more than anything. Absolutely. You know, y'all are afraid of wands, spells. You're spelling something every day. I'm spelling something right now. You're going to go spell something when you go to work. You're going to spell something when your husband comes home or your wife comes home and you say a spell that is going to create something within their life. Everything we see, we say, do, act on, it's all, it's all there. I support you 100%. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Michael Kerr, what's up, my friends? Uh, what are your thoughts on Akashic Records? Oh, man, like... 
again, I used to be afraid of all this stuff. If you're connected to source and you're rooted in source, okay, and you're connected to the tree of life, the good fruit, okay, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. So look for the fruit. You got all the, there's a lot of pastors out there that have got rotted fruit. You know, there's a lot of churches out there that have rotted fruit. We got a lot of churches in my town and a lot of homeless people. That's a problem. Where's the fruit? You got a lot of spiritual people online. You got a lot of religious people online. You got a lot of Bible-based people online. But there's a lot of judgment and a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear-based stuff going on. I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. If it's not in the Bible, it's not. Da, da, da. And I'm telling you guys, our Bibles are here to give us a starting point. To find the true word of God within you. The word in the Bible for the word of God, by the way. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. That word is logos. L-O-G-O-S comes from the greek word lego okay why do we why do we call legos legos they're building blocks okay so we're building something with them it's the divine computation or the expression of god within self and we miss the esoteric representation because everyone wants to argue about the literal belief systems that we have rather than take the esoteric from all of these mythologies try to understand what the wars of the gods really are and look at the old testament and understand that and then you go look at the older mythologies based around that old testament around genesis and exodus and all of that and all of that is happening within self you are born but before you're born you're in the garden you're in your mother's womb you're in the perfect environment you're already walking with god then you're kicked out because you become self-aware you have gnosis. Now you have to go toil through the world. You're going to be looking for a promised land and you're going to go through a lot of stuff that's going to keep you from going into it. And then you're going to enter the promised land. You're going to step into your purpose. You're going to step into a more beautiful place in your life. And then you're going to get distracted again and you're going to start worshiping idols. Then you're going to have a savior arise within you. That savior, that logos, that Christ energy is going to tell you step into your divine purpose. Quit worshiping idols. Quit worrying about the literal location that you're at in this promised land. Step into your divine self. Start serving the actual creator, not the gods that you've created or that other people have given you. And by the way, with that, you're going to have to crucify your lower chakras, your, your carnal self. We're always going to keep part of that, and it's all going to work together, but you're going to step higher. You're going to step into your heart chakras, your third eye, your crown chakras. Most people don't live here. You're only going to experience this a little bit of the time. Your third eye, if it was on all the time, you wouldn't even you couldn't even take all the data in. So some people are going to have flashes of that third eye. You're going to see patterns. You're going to see colors. You're going to see synchronicity. God's going to tell you things. Things are going to work all for your good because you love the Lord. But your heart is where Christ told you to live, by the way. All of us, all of us, I don't care if you're left brain, right brain, whatever. We're all in the battle of the flesh trying to find the throne of God, the seat right here the seat of mercy within the heart to move up into the heavens to experience the authentic reality. How do we unblock the third eye? Here's the deal. A lot of people are like, there's all this stuff like, oh, you got to use, you know, you, you can't have the, the dyes in your, your detergent. You can't have this. And it's all the stuff. It's all the chemicals. Well, I mean, of course I recommend, you know, an organic diet, stuff like that. Um, but the, the real way to unblock your third eye guys is just get out of the world. You know, get, a lot of you guys are working jobs that are making you work, you know, seven, eight days a week. Wait, there's an eighth day. I didn't know that, you know, um, and you might need to just downsize and simplify and find, find yourself some, you might need to 
travel full time. You might need to um, give up a lot of the extracurricular stuff that you're doing so that when you do get off work, you can come home, you can meditate. You don't understand. I got a family. I got kids. Great. Bring them along. Get your kids to meditate and then they might listen to you. And I don't have kids, so I can't speak to that. I'm just saying like heaven is here now in the present moment in the meditation. When you guys actually meditate and you stop and you center yourself on source, you're going to see, hear, taste, smell things that you never did before. Appalachian Trail. Oh my gosh, Billy. That is one of my goals in life to hike the Appalachian Trail, by the way. I read a book called Walk in the Woods. Um, Incredible, incredible author that made a movie about it. Read Walk in the Woods, by the way, if you have not read that. If you guys like nature. By the way, the more spiritual you become, the more nature you love. What's up, Melissa? How are you doing, my friend? Um, Nature is where it's at. That's why I love the moon right now. Like all things, all of these things that are created. Now, if you get into the Gnostic mythology of stuff, like we don't live in the real world, it's all a hologram, whatever, that's fine. You can believe that, but still sources in all things, okay? The moon has a spirit behind it. The sun has a spirit behind it. The wind has a spirit behind it. That's what every mythology ever tells us. And as we study more in the sciences, we don't have a clue what causes all of this stuff to function like a dang clock, to function so perfectly that creation does not sin against itself. It's almost like they took oaths to the creator. Oh, really interesting that Enoch says that. And so all I'm telling you guys to do is to recognize that and harness the power that God has already put in you and understand these signs and the seasons that we have. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. You just have to tune out and tune in. And some people find it and they go, you know, you got all these people that are, you know, go on these whatever journeys with different substances and they go to the rainforest and drink them, whatever, and, and have this experience. And that's great. But I think you guys can have it in your living room just by turning off all the stuff, just by taking time, just by going on a walk in the woods, just by stopping and asking father source. And by the way, to really step into this, you have to agree to give up anything that it takes, okay? I had to do that, and I've given up a home. I gave up a vehicle. I've been through two vehicles since then. I've given up a business. Now I have this new thing that we're doing. And he gave me infinitely more, but I had to agree to just like, what did Jesus tell the man who said, you know, how do I, how do I follow you into the kingdom of heaven? He's like, you got to go home, sell everything, give the money to the four to the poor, pick up your cross and follow me. And that's what I had to do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Misagoras, uh, the, this is for the called. If you feel called, you know, don't, I'm not forcing anyone to do anything. You can't force yourself to do anything. If you feel led to do this, you might have to take time and have a life changing prayer a life-changing agreement with the Father, with Source. That you're ready and that nothing else matters. Now, I'm not talking about your family and your kids and stuff. Those They matter, okay? This is not, you know, you get some of these people out here that say, you got to give up the whole thing. No, it's, I'm just saying, again, maybe the house needs to be downsized. Maybe the city that you're in needs to be, maybe it's time to move to a different one. Maybe it's time that that job that you you still haven't gotten the promotion in, bye bye. Maybe that side hustle you've been doing that you feel led to do, but you have no faith to just really step into it. Maybe it's time. I have people in my life right now who have a perfectly viable side hustle that will not step into it because they love the comfort of that almighty paycheck every every two weeks. They got to get that. Well, but you don't understand the economy right now. We got to have, I get it, guys. I get it. Trust me. Nobody understands more than I do. I can't tell you how many close calls I've had over the past nine, 12 months of this insane ride we've been on, 11 months now. Um, I get it. I get it. Okay. But I also get how God actually works. It's hard to remember in the middle of it. I get that. I get that. 
and this is for the called and the lead. I cannot, I cannot push you into anything, but I'm telling you guys right now, and I'm going to read this before I end. There are various kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. Let's say it with me again. There are various types of gifts, but the same spirit. Okay. Thank you class for repeating that with me. If you didn't repeat it, let me say it one more time. There are various kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. What did that not say? There are various types of gifts that your church will agree to, to let you have. There are various types of gifts that your parents will understand. There are various types of gifts that are to serve only certain people in your life. There are various types of gifts that come from God, but there are some that come from the powers of darkness. No, it says there are various kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. This is in 1 Corinthians 12. There are various kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are various kinds of workings, but the same God who works all things in all. And I just heard that echo off the wall here. Let me say it again. Who works all things in all, okay? You guys that are afraid because you have some psychic tendencies and you're afraid because, well, what if it's an evil spirit that's working this and he's trying to deceive and blah, blah, blah. Well, because even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. But you guys don't know what that means because that verse is referring to the fact that Yahweh in the Old Testament cloaked himself with light as a disguise. When you have this beautiful, beautiful person, this son of man or humanity in the esoteric that comes awake and says, wait a minute, I am in my father and my father is in me. And if we're willing to be within him, what is him? The word, the logos, the divine expression. If we're willing to step into that and out of the world for just a minute, then our life will actually change. Then the timeline will actually shift. And I'm telling you guys, this is the last opportunity of 2022. This moon energy right now. It can freeze and solidify going into the dead of winter. By the way, whatever freezes and solidifies is not going to be thawed out until April or May. So if you're struggling with something right now, it's time to go within. Everybody's afraid of that narrow path. Everybody's told you that narrow path is it's in a Bible or it's in a church or it's in some system. That narrow path is within you. And when you walk within to that and you're willing to clear out all of your own BS... We all have it. I got more than most of y'all put together, let me tell you that. When you're willing to go through and clear all of that out, you're going to open yourself up to the divine. Because what does this say right here? Various kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. I'm not even going to go read them. You know, you got like word of knowledge. You got uh, the the spirit of faith. You've got healings. You've got uh, miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, Okay. Discerning the spirits is something we got all wrong, too. This is just the download I'm getting. It's not just discerning of spirits like this good, that bad. Like, we know, like, it's it's all the spirit of God, okay? But what are these elemental spirits behind everything? I'm discerning spirits today as I talk about the wisdom behind the moon and the idea that, that Mars is going to go behind it and it's going to be hidden for a minute. So we have an opportunity for this cold moon. We have that war can go within it, okay, for a moment and allow it to shine bright and be the only thing reflecting the glory of God in our lives for a moment before that can be born into what tomorrow is the feast of the Immaculate Conception. So what can be born within you tomorrow immaculately, divinely, if you're willing to let that war within pass through you and come out the other side divinely inspired changed as we go into the winter and people all around you are stuck in the old timeline stuck in the old anxieties stuck in the old judgments and the old beliefs about self 
that you've moved through and you're moving with a clarity in the winter, seeing the beauty and the crystal fractal nature of the snow and the frost. And you know that your storehouse is full because it is the very storehouse of God. And you've got people all around you that are stuck and frozen in a timeline as they move through that they're not going to thaw out until middle of the year next year. And you're clear because you've taken a moment to allow the God of war to go through you and clear out anything that wasn't strong enough to survive. Absolutely, Annie. Absolutely. Amen. One of our Mythos members, Annie, here, had a really cool experience yesterday. Probably a startling experience, and I won't share it publicly here. That's not for me to share, but um, telling you guys, this stuff is it's all around us, and if you're willing to just, I don't know, step out of what we consider sanity for a minute and step into something that is purely divine, that is driven by the Spirit of God, It's where life changes. Deanna says, preach, brother. I love you guys. I'm going to jump off now. Um, my wife's on the way home. I get to eat lunch with her today. Um, go read you some 1 Corinthians 12. Even if you're not, if you never read a Bible before, go read it. It's it's just some good stuff. Uh, if you're confused on the Bible or you need help kind of tracking through it in a way that's that what I would consider, an, uh, I'm a Christ follower, a universal Christ follower, Christ energy logos uh christ consciousness not i'm not your uh your bible beater type whatever um i don't necessarily consider myself a christian i consider myself more of a universalist um but if you do need help going through the bible i'm that's part of what this channel is here for because i think there's some really deep esoteric things that we've just missed and we don't really understand uh yes i am actually reading the kabbalion right now uh, amazing, amazing stuff, by the way. If you've never read the Kabbalion, there's a great YouTube video on it. It's four hours long. The guy has a really deep voice. He puts really cool music to it, and he just goes through the whole thing. I am going to start doing stuff like that. I have a hard time not offering commentary, so you will definitely not get like just one four-hour episode with me reading the whole thing. But we are going to try to start moving a little bit more swiftly through Enoch. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to talk about magic. Magic in the Bible. The magic of Christ. With Joshua from Sons of God Ministries. Do not miss that one. You can catch all the other episodes under my collaboration tab on my YouTube. My YouTube, my Mythos group, all my programs. As well as my bookshop and my t-shirt shop. All the ways you can support me. If you like my artwork. That's over on my t-shirt shop. You might get it by Christmas. You can get free shipping right now. I'm offering free shipping just because I don't know when you'll get it. We've had people order shirts and get them in a, a week or two. We've had people have to wait, you know, four or five weeks. It just depends on where you are and where this is a company I use. It's a print on demand. So depending on where they are in their print schedule, you can go grab the shirts over there. I've got all my really cool artwork, the story behind each piece of work is all on the t-shirt website so go check it out uh but again if you want to join the mythos you just want more of this more access uh to what i'm doing here it's only nine bucks a month and and that's that's mainly what i'm pushing because uh that that community right there is the strength behind what we're doing here so thank you guys i love y'all uh, the only way you're going to understand uh your philosophies is to understand god absolutely uh, amen, Kevin. Thank you very much. Uh, Melissa says, can't wait. Um, love Josh. Deannon says, yeah, absolutely. we got a good one planned tonight. So, um, Kabbalion is different than Kabbalah is different than Kabbal. Okay. Now they're all kind of somewhat tied together and I don't understand the differences of all of them. Uh, but, uh, the Kabbalion is an ancient document. Okay. And it has a ton of mysticism in it. Um, it's a lot of what some of the mystery schools are built on. It's the nature of reality. Stuff that science right now is discovering is in this ancient document about the nature of consciousness, the connectivity of all things, the ability to just 
you know, flash ideas between people. Like, uh, it's pretty, pretty wild. And I promise I'll read it here on the show because it's something you guys need to understand. I need to understand it. Uh, what's up, Brandon? How are you, my bud? Uh, Melissa says, love you, brother. Love you too, Melissa. Thank you for being here. Melissa is a part of our mythos community as well. We've got a bunch of you guys on here and, um, I'm hoping we're going to hit, uh, well over a hundred members in that by the end of the year, I think we can do it. So, uh, again, that's the strength you guys, the more people are in that, the better conversations we have, the more strength we have in the community. Um, and if you think about the cost for a year, uh, you're looking at like a hundred and uh, well, I'm not good at math, $104 or something for the whole year to support what I'm doing. Uh, if you just keep that membership up, it's a huge, huge help to me. And it's only nine bucks a month out of your pocket. And literally every person that joins that is helping me do this work, uh, which ultimately is the most important thing I can do here. It's not the private interaction in a group. It's not a private one-on-one -on -one program or anything like that. The most important thing I can do is to get this message out so that somebody might have a moment of clarity and go, oh my gosh, this is what all this meant. This is where I'm supposed to be in life. This is where I'm supposed to go. Uh, you're helping change my life. Thank you for what you're doing. Brandon, thank you very much. I appreciate you, my brother. Uh, Willie, welcome, my friend. Um, so anyway, think about the full moon. The, the cold moon as the Mohawk people of New York state, uh, the indigenous people called it. They knew this moon, this last moon of the year was a solidifying energy. And as Mar, this is a really unique one as Mars is going behind it, that God of war, uh, you know, you can war with yourself or you can allow that God of war to pass through you and take any, any of the bad stuff, any of the things you're holding on to the anxieties or the fears, whatever, you know, I was my whole prayer this morning is like, I'm just, I'm letting it go. And I'm just going to step into my divine purpose. Just try to stop. Like just Lord, take it, take it, take it away. It's not serving me. Why do I love these things that aren't serving me? Let them go. Cause you don't want them to freeze and be stuck with you for another four or five, six months till the thaw comes. I love you guys. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support of what I'm doing. You guys keep me going. So y'all have an awesome day. I'll see you this afternoon. We're going to be live with Josh at 4.30 Central Standard Time. Not my normal 3 o'clock, but 4.30 Central Standard Time. It's going to be 5.30 Eastern his time. So y'all go check it out. I love you guys. Peace.